couple embarked on their honeymoon to South Africa, staying at a luxurious hotel by the seaside. Unfortunately, what was meant to be a joyful vacation ended in tragedy. What exactly happened? Hello, I am Rima. Welcome to True Story Channel. Love blossoms in the presence of trust and fades when that trust is betrayed. In this video, we'll explore a heartbreaking story that is both tragic and shocking. Before we begin, we want to remind you that this account is based on a true story, not a fictional movie. Sweden, March 12, 1982. A baby girl named Annie Nina Hindocha was born to Vinod and Nilam Hindocha. Annie had an older sister, Ami, and an older brother, Anis. Her parents were of Indian origin but had moved to Uganda. In the 1970s, however, they relocated to Sweden due to the mass deportation of South Asians by Ugandan President Idi Amin. The Hindosha family was welcomed in Sweden, where Vinod started a business that soon flourished, allowing him to secure a good future for his family. Vinod prioritized the well-being of his wife and children, and worked hard to provide them with the best life possible. As Annie grew up, she became a confident, intelligent, and ambitious young woman, eager to achieve her dreams. She had a natural leadership quality and was the glue holding her extended family together. She excelled in school and enjoyed dancing as a hobby. When she entered adulthood, Annie graduated from university with excellent grades and quickly found a job in marketing at Ericsson, a mobile phone manufacturing company. She eventually moved to Stockholm and continued to pursue her career aspirations. By the time she was 28, she was open to meeting someone special. Annie's trips to London to visit relatives allowed her to expand her social circles and meet new people. During one of these visits, her aunt arranged for her to meet a young man whom she thought might be a good match for Annie. At a cozy coffee shop, Annie was introduced to Shrian, a 30-year-old businessman from Bristol. Shrian, of Indian heritage, was a successful entrepreneur respected by those around him. He inherited his family's care home business and had become a millionaire before turning 30. Annie's aunt believed Shrian was an ideal match for her niece. However, Annie initially showed little interest and admitted she didn't find Shrian particularly appealing. Despite her initial reaction, she agreed to meet him again and was open to seeing where things might go. Shrian made persistent efforts to win her over and Annie responded warmly. Though she had heard rumors of Shrian's boastful nature, she believed he had a kind, gentlemanly side and appreciated his sense of humor, which kept their conversations lively. His attentiveness eventually won Annie's heart. The couple maintained a long-distance relationship, taking turns visiting each other. Over time, they faced challenges typical of young couples, often clashing due to differing viewpoints and stubborn personalities. Annie, wanting to strengthen their relationship, decided to leave her job and move to Luton, a town about 50 kilometers from London. She rented an apartment there to be closer to Shrian and visit him regularly. Annie's family eventually traveled to the United Kingdom to meet Shrian's family. Both families discussed the couple's relationship, and Vinod, Annie's father, was pleased with Shrian's respectful demeanor and dedication to his daughter. Annie had told her father that Shrian was committed to his principles and had refrained from intimate relations before marriage, which Vinod respected as a reflection of Shrian's dedication to his values. After gaining the approval of both families, Annie and Shrian were encouraged to begin planning their wedding. Thrilled at the prospect, they poured their efforts into making it a perfect celebration. Despite feeling a little intimidated by Shrian's family wealth, Vinod was determined to host a respectable wedding for his daughter. On October 29, 2010, Annie and Shrian celebrated their wedding in Mumbai, India, during a full moon. The grand ceremony took place outdoors with 300 guests in attendance, surrounded by magnificent decorations. Annie wore an emerald green bridal sari embellished with golden brocade, adorned with intricate jewelry, including bracelets, necklaces, and jade pendants. She looked stunning, and her radiant beauty captivated everyone. Meanwhile, Shreen donned a cream-colored suit and a traditional Indian groom's turban, making the pair look perfectly matched as all eyes were drawn to them. Following their wedding, Ani and Shreen hosted a lavish three-day reception that became a dream wedding for every single woman who attended. In addition to celebrating in India, Ani and Shrian also held a reception in London to include friends from the area. Two weeks later, Ani and Shrian embarked on their honeymoon in South Africa. Ani wasn't sure where they'd be staying, but she trusted her husband, who had planned everything meticulously. They arrived in Cape Town on November 12, 2010. To save on transportation costs, Shrian chose a local taxi instead of the hotel's shuttle. 
Soon after, they were greeted by Zola Tongo, a native South African driver with a gray minivan. Polite and accommodating, Zola helped them into the vehicle and drove the couple on a 20-minute journey to their luxurious hotel by the sea, Cape Grace. Upon arriving, Shrian arranged for Zola to return the following day for a city tour and dinner. Zola agreed, suggesting he could be a temporary guide for the couple. Before the evening tour, Ani and Shrian enjoyed some drinks at a bar, snapping photos to commemorate their time together. Shrian had also made reservations at one of the area's most popular restaurants for a romantic dinner. At 7.30, Zola arrived to pick up the couple, who sat in the back of the minivan. During the drive, Zola mentioned some interesting local spots they could visit after dinner. Later that night, he dropped them off at the restaurant, where they shared a quiet, intimate meal before returning to Zola's minivan. Upon re-entering the vehicle, Srian expressed interest in experiencing the real Cape Town and requested Zola take them to an authentic local neighborhood. Zola then drove them to Guguletu, one of the most crime-ridden areas in South Africa, where theft and robbery were common, and hundreds had lost their lives to violence between 2005 and 2010. Despite the area's dangers, Zola ventured into Guguletu, which was mostly deserted and dimly lit. Around 10.45 that night, Zola stopped the minivan at an intersection. Moments later, two men approached the vehicle, banging on the doors. These were local men intending to rob the passengers at gunpoint. They ordered Zola out of the vehicle and then took over the driver's seat, forcing the couple to remain in the back. The robbers drove for nearly an hour, intimidating Ani and Shrien, who held each other tightly in fear. One of the robbers demanded Ani's jewelry. She complied, although her husband discreetly removed her ring and hid it beneath the seat. The men then pointed their weapon at Shrian, ordering him to hand over his watch and phone. Soon after, they forced Shrian out of the van while Ani was instructed to stay. She screamed in terror as the minivan sped off, leaving her husband on a desolate street. Stranded and worried for his wife's safety, Shrian walked to a nearby house for help, asking the residents to contact the police. Shortly afterward, police officers arrived, and some escorted Shrian back to Cape Grace. Meanwhile, other officers patrolled Guguletu, searching for Ani based on her husband's description. During this time, Zola had reported the incident to the police, explaining that he had been left alone in a dangerous area. The police soon located him and escorted him back to the hotel. At Cape Grace, the officers requested that the hotel manager review the security footage and cooperate in the investigation. The manager, shocked by the events, expressed his concerns about Shrian and Zola's unusual decision to venture into Guguletu at night, suggesting that it was a risky and suspicious choice. As the investigation intensified, Shrian borrowed a phone from the hotel reception to inform his family. Shortly after, his father contacted Ani's family to relay the tragic news. Ani's father, in turn, reached out to the South African police expressing his willingness to cover any ransom demands in hopes of safely bringing his daughter home. The unfolding of events had turned what should have been a joyous honeymoon into a mystery that would send shockwaves through both families and draw international attention. Not long after, Shrian called his father-in-law, expressing his deep regret and apologizing for his inability to protect Ani. Vat, Ani's father, immediately booked a flight to South Africa, determined to search for his daughter himself. Meanwhile, police received a report from a local resident about an abandoned gray minivan spotted on the roadside approximately 20 minutes from Guguletu. Early the next morning, officers arrived at the scene, where they discovered Ani lying lifeless in the back seat, with visible injuries and a gunshot wound to her lower body. The scene indicated that Ani had been a victim of brutal violence, with bruises across her body and a wedding ring worth 15,000 pounds left behind. Vaught, who was in transit in Amsterdam, received word of his daughter's death, leaving him devastated, yet resolved to continue his journey to Cape Town. Arriving the next day, he met Shrian at the Cape Grace Hotel, embracing his son-in-law with a sorrowful and broken heart. He was overcome with grief at the loss of his daughter, struggling to comprehend the tragedy. Later, a police officer informed Vaught that Ani's case was complex, but the South African authorities were committed to finding the perpetrators. Police began investigating Zola, the taxi driver, questioning why he had taken the tourist to Guguletu. Zola responded that he was simply following Shrian's request for a local tour. When asked why the robbers allowed both him and Shrian to escape, Zola admitted that he too found it strange, 
as the criminals should have known that both he and Shrien could report the incident to the police. Detectives continued pressing Zola, suspecting he was withholding information. The case gained widespread attention across South Africa, sparking public outrage. Ani's family members in Sweden, including her sister Ami, were also deeply affected. Ami contacted South African authorities, revealing that Ani had expressed discomfort about changes in Srian's behavior during their stay. She urged the police to consider Srian as a suspect, suggesting he could have orchestrated the robbery. The police followed up on this information by interrogating Srian. Meanwhile, forensic investigators uncovered fingerprints in the minivan, leading them to Sali Lanjani, a known convict with a history of serious offenses dating back to 2005. The police quickly apprehended Sali, recovering a phone belonging to Zola. Sali admitted his involvement in the robbery and identified another accomplice, Wabezi Wamadota. During questioning, Shrian denied his sister-in-law's allegations, asserting that he could never harm his own wife. He was eventually cleared of all charges and allowed to return to his home in England. Back in South Africa, the police continued interrogations with Zola, Sali, and Wabezi. During this process, Wabezi mentioned another individual involved, a man named Mande Bolombo, who worked as a hotel receptionist. Police quickly detained Mond and brought him in for questioning. When faced with his accomplices, Wabezi urged Mond to tell them everything you know, but Mond remained silent. Zola, however, confessed his involvement and sought a reduced sentence in exchange for cooperation. His admission surprised the police, as Zola had no previous criminal record and was known as a law-abiding worker. Zola went on to reveal that the incident was not a random crime, but rather a planned attack orchestrated by Shrian himself. According to Zola, Shrian had approached him on the day of their arrival to discuss a plan to harm Ani. Zola emphasized that their conversations in the vehicle had been captured by security cameras. This startling revelation transformed the investigation, turning it from a tragic incident into a calculated plot with far-reaching implications. The authorities now had to untangle a web of deception and betrayal, all while pursuing justice for Ani. In a recent investigation, details surrounding the tragic case of Ani reveal complex layers involving her husband, Shrian, and a group of alleged accomplices. According to statements from Zola, a taxi driver initially hired by Shrian, the plan to harm Ani was orchestrated with deliberate intent. Zola recounts that during an earlier meeting, he was approached by Shrian to carry out this grim plan. Zola, uncomfortable with the request, redirected Shrian to Mond, a hotel employee who had connections with individuals capable of carrying out such an act. Prior to the tragic event, Zola disclosed that he had received a payment from Shrian as a reward for his involvement in the arrangements. Surveillance footage later confirmed frequent interactions between Zola, Monda, and Wabe, another associate. Additional CCTV evidence showed Monda in communication with an unknown caller, exchanging what appeared to be critical instructions. According to Zola, Further communication from Shrian clarified that payment for the hired individuals would be discreetly left in an envelope tucked behind a seat in the vehicle. In response to these revelations, South African authorities sought assistance from the British government to extradite Shrian. However, Shrian's family vehemently denied these accusations, employing reputable legal representation in England to counter the claims. Despite the international media attention and growing public interest, no conclusive motive surfaced, complicating the case even further. Ani did not hold any significant life insurance policy, nor were there any apparent marital issues before the incident. Yet, amidst ongoing rumors, a British publication disclosed details of Shrine's personal life that hinted at a concealed lifestyle, sparking further controversy. Though Shrian and his family dismissed these claims as slander, public perception shifted, especially after learning that he attended a gathering shortly following Ani's funeral. This action, which Ani's father considered disrespectful, increased tensions between the two families. Adding to the suspicions, Ani's siblings reported her concerns about Shrian's behavior during their honeymoon, which led to further police scrutiny. While many suspects confessed, including Zola, who admitted his role in the plan, the investigation faced setbacks. In the courtroom, Monda testified against Shrian but received legal immunity for his statements. Other suspects, however, reversed their testimonies, resulting in Shrian's eventual acquittal. Meanwhile, Salil, implicated in the incident, received a life sentence but later passed away in prison. Zola, having served his time with exemplary behavior, was released early, while Shrian returned to England, continuing his life despite ongoing speculation about his involvement. 
Annie's family, disappointed by the court's final decisions, express their grief and frustration, feeling that justice for Annie remains incomplete. As this case concludes, it serves as a somber reminder to remain cautious in placing unwavering trust in others, as outward appearances can sometimes obscure deeper truths.